Okay, so now we're in chapter 10, section 2. Now the standard is still the same. Trace the expansion of the Roman Republic and its transformation into an empire, including key geographic, political, and economic elements. So we're going to, this time, uh, discuss the way the Roman Republic operated, analyze the rise of the Roman Senate, and evaluate the law of the Twelve Tables and its importance in Rome. So, remember we talked last time about how the Patricians and the Plebeians kind of had a conflict because the Plebeians outnumbered them by a lot. And they started getting upset they weren't being represented in the government, so they said, you know, we're going to form our own government. And... I don't know what that is, but uh, either way, uh, we will... Uh, they decided they were going to form their own government, so... The Plebeians were like, hey, wait a minute, we really don't like this idea. We don't really know what's going to happen. And so because of this, we're kind of backing away a little bit. Um, they said that they needed to change something. So when the Plebeians complained about the government in the 400s BC, they knew they needed to change. One of the changes was that offices were created for the Plebeians in government. They started saying, okay, we'll give y'all a little bit of space in the government. We'll give you a role, kind of a, an honorary thing, something to push you to the side, basically to shut them up. Rome developed a tripartite government, which was a government with three parts, which again, there's a lot of similarities between our government and this government. Our government is a tripartite government too. Remember from civics, you've got three branches. Remember what they are, the three branches of government? You have the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch. What are they? The executive branch is the president and vice president. The judicial branch is the Supreme Court and the court system. And the legislative branch is the Congress, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. Well, with the, government, with the Roman government, they also had a tripartite government. And uh, you had magistrates, which was the first part of it, which were elected officials. They were, these were just people they elected into a position. Over... All the magistrates, you had two most powerful magistrates, which were the consuls. And that word's going to be very important later on. These were the first part of the tripartite government. Some magistrates were judges, others managed finances, others organized games or festivals. You know, it's, it's like public servants today. It's like mayors, city council members, governors, you know, the things that we have today. They do these things, you know. They... they they deal with the government. They deal with everyday things. You know, they don't necessarily judge. That's the job of the judicial branch. But, um, you know, you just kind of see here that this is the first group here was the magistrates who were the elected officials. Then you have the Roman Senate, which was a council of wealthy and powerful Romans that advised the city's leaders. Senators had office for life, unlike magistrates who served for only a year. By 200 BC, the Senate had great influence in Rome's government. Uh, now, once again, looking at our own government, we have terms for the House of Representatives. Remember how long the House of Representatives serves? They serve for two years. We also have a term for senators. Our senators in the United States serve. For six years. Thumb of their finger. Yeah, six years. So, um, their magistrates only serve for a year. Their senators serve for life. Now, the comparison to our government is the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court serves for life. So, once you get on it, you stay on it until you retire or you die. And that's the way the Roman Senate was. And the Roman Senate, once you was on it, you were on it. There's no election. There's no voting you out of it. You're in the Senate once they vote you in. So they gained, they gained a lot of influence because they were in there for life. Uh, now this is a picture here that um, I thought was funny um, because, you know, my humor is amazing. But it says the Roman Senate taking political opposition pretty much as far as it can humanly go. There's a picture of them killing Julius Caesar. So, I mean... Washington gets pretty heated for the most part. Now, there were some historical accounts of people beating each other with canes and stuff like that. But for the most part in Washington, D.C., you're not going to see, you know, the House of Representatives trying to jump Donald Trump or, you know, Donald Trump trying to 
you know, trip up Nancy Pelosi in the hallway or, you know, anything like that. Like, you're not going to see that in our government because it's not civil. But that's what happens here with the Roman Senate is they wind up killing Julius Caesar because they don't like what he's doing. Assemblies and tribunes. The third part of Roman government had two branches. The first was assemblies that were made up of plebeians and patricians, and they elected magistrates. Uh, so this is the assemblies that elected the magistrates. And the second was made up of the tribunes. Now, this was trying to silence the plebeians a little bit because they were saying, hey, you know what, y'all get to have to decide who the magistrates are, so you've got a voice now, so you can be quiet about all this uprising and forming your own government and all these different things. You ain't got to do that anymore because we're giving you a little bit of time. We're, you know, we're giving you a little bit of power. We're giving you a little bit of, of, of votes, and so you should be good now. Now, just a, a couple of terms. The first one, the word veto means prohibit, means I forbid in Latin. Uh, so, you know, and you hear the word veto a lot. Uh, the, the President of the United States can veto bills, you know, that they're trying to pass into a law, you know. And even in popular culture, you have TV shows like Big Brother uh, on CBS, and it, it talks about veto, you know, the, the power of veto, you know, to get rid of one of the nominations. If you want to be brother, I'm losing you. So let's move back and let's move on. Um, Latin is the Roman language. This is the language that the Roman people speak. Now, after the fall of Rome, Latin is going to kind of fall into disarray. It's going to form, form into the Romantic languages, um, uh, the Romance languages that are going to develop like uh, French, Spanish, you know, Italian, things like that. Each tribune only stayed in power one year to limit their power. Once again, you have checks and balances here, making sure that somebody doesn't have too much power. The Roman Forum uh, was the place where the Law of the Twelve Tables were kept, and the Law of the Twelve Tables were Rome's written law. Now, I'm going to also post a video. It's a silly video of some high school kids. I think it, they were making a class project, but it's pretty, you know, uh, it, it's, it's spot on in terms of, you know, how uh, the Law of the Twelve Tables was viewed. Uh, it talks about, you know, it's, it's some terrible laws. Like, if, you know, a baby is born disfigured, they would dis they would kill it. If it was born missing limbs, they would kill it, which is terrible. Um, but death was the penalty that a lot of these laws would result in. And that's one thing that they, those guys that made the video is that everything is like you know, the punishment, death, you know, because that's what everything was. It was also the site of important government buildings and religious buildings. And this is the Roman Forum. The Forum was in the center of Rome between two major hills. Uh, these two hills were the Palatine and the Capitoline. Uh, people in the Forum would give grand speeches, shop, and have gladiator fights. Um, this is where they would have, you know, the, the entertainment area business area would be here at this location of the Roman Forum. So uh, we discussed the way the Roman Republic operated, about it being a tripartite government. We analyzed the rise of the Roman Senate. They're going to gain a lot of power. They're going to continue to have a lot of power, which is going to lead to the rise of the Roman Empire. And then we evaluate the law of the 12 tables and its importance in Rome. Like I said, I'm going to post a video. It's going to have uh, the different ones and, you know, and the video is not meant to be insensitive towards anything. It's just, you know, that's that's the way it was done. You know, someone was born disfigured, they would kill them. You know, if, um, you know, it talks about how that uh, if someone refuses to go to the magistrate, you can go and take them by force, you know, different things like that. So watch that video, kind of give an idea, get an idea about what the law of the 12 tables were. Uh, and that is... Section 2.